Morning. It's such a pleasure to have you in the studio today. Good morning, Mercy. How are you? Very well. How have you been managing with the whole first subsidy is gone in yeah. June? I have people that don't, don't drive to work anymore or yeah. just do carpooling. Uh, well, I stopped driving to work now. Yeah. So how do you manage? I go by public transport. Wow. I mean, I mean if, you, if you told you 10 years ago, 5 years ago that you would be doing, you'd be forced to do I this. I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Let's see what we have on the front pages of our national dailies. Then we we'll come back to you to get your Very comments right. on um, on them. The first paper in no particular order is Daily Independent. That's the big paper that we have here. The first paper in a particular order, Daily Independent. What is the big story here? Federal government may revive economy by unlocking one trillion naira in asset sale. Okay, let's take a look at the writer quickly. Proceeds may tackle debt boarding provide infrastructure but let's see what we have below the picture of the day that's the next big thing is on the evasion sector the said players upbeat on back of exchange rates unification oh goodness me what do we have beside that discourse alerts consumers of traffic increase tariff i beg your pardon Discourse a lot consumers of tariff increase july 1 brace up nigerians you are about to pay more. A police to probe killing of man over alleged blasphemy in Sokoto. Um, Governor Liu calls for calm. Page six is where you can find that not so fantastic a story. What else do we have? Oil subsidy removal. CSOs decry alleged exclusion by NLC in negotiation with the federal government. Then the red strip just below there says Lagos State opens shelter for survivors of domestic violence good one there you can find on page 29 of the daily independent we just take a dash above the masthead what do we have syrup kicks over cbn's demand of customer social media handles threatens lawsuit i mean nigeria's twitter in fact online yes in fact social media yesterday was agog with this particular um with this particular story Beside that story, 50 killed, 170 houses raised in Emo communities, OYC president alleges. Hmm. Well, let's move on from that and see what we have on the front page of The Guardian. The Guardian, page six. I think this, the thing that really caught your attention there is the picture of the day, of course, showing um, the livestock that's for sale as uh, for sale, I beg your pardon as um, the Muslim faithful look forward to celebrating the, okay, um, is it Eid al-Kabir this time around? The Eid al-Kabir festival, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Interesting there. Let me see what infographic there is there. I think you can see the prices, the prices of food items. The prices of food items, um, yes, I think it's, uh, prices of food items and prices of tickets for travels. That's what you can see the infographic. So before you travel, you might want to take a look at it so you don't get to the motor park. <laughs> Only to find out that your transport fare is never going to be enough or you're going to be stranded when you get to where you are going to. So that's it on the front page there of The Guardian. And the big story tells us what it is all about. It says a Muslim faithful groan as subsidy removal squeezes family budget. Mm. Below that, group decries prevailing hardship in Nigeria. Everybody takes over as NSA vows to deepen security stability. We wish you all the best, sir, because that's what Nigerian, Nigerians want. But despite Mba's order, Monday sit at home persists in Enugu. And below that, Nigeria, developing countries at risk of deglobalization. You want to read more of that story in page 15 of the Guardian newspaper. Let's quickly go above the masthead, or below the masthead, I mean. There's a story in the blue strip. I delayed removal of petrol subsidy for Tinumbu APC to win election, says the former president of Nigeria, uh, Muhammad Buhari. Confusion in power sector as discourse hint at 300 naira per kilowatt electricity tariff. What's the confusion there? Is next saying no? Is next saying no to this increment? Well, let's move on from the Guardian newspaper quickly and see what we have on the front page of the nation. Discourse await next nod. 
to increase electricity tariff. And the picture of the day is a pretty interesting and eye-catching one on the front page of the nation. You're going to see it when it is put right there. But before that, let's move on and see what we have there. You can see the story above the master that says, seven pilgrims died of psychological challenges, says Nakon. Ex aid, why Buhari didn't remove petrol subsidy, floats Naira. Ibadan's kit maker remanded in prison. Automatic job for Lasso's best graduate. We have other stories there which you can take a look at uh, on the front page of the nation. But of particular interest is this, is this, um, is this burning bush and um, display of ammunition right here on the front page of the paper. I'm trying to see what um, the story is about, but it's a bit, I can't get to read it. I can't get to read it. I really don't know what is happening here. But as soon as I get details of this particular story, definitely we update you on it. So let's move on. Walk halted on Lagos Ibadan Express Road. Government appeals uh, 5 billion Naira Ararme judgment. We'll move on quickly to see what we have on the front page of Daily Trust. That's the paper we're taking a look at quickly on the front page of Daily Trust. After board dissolution, unease in federal government agencies as management fears sack. Below that, we have the story of electricity tariff. A uh, group saying the hike will worsen the plight of Nigerians. What do we have below that? There's another boat mishap. Police divers recovered bodies of two ABU students in Calabar. This is one too many. Court upholds FRSC's power to impound vehicles. Lagosians especially, you can hear that. The court upholds FRSC's power to impound vehicles. Abducted Quara Bride, sister-in-law's regained freedom after 7 million Naira ransom. A quick dash to what we have just below the masthead. Go uh, Kano gov governor stops salaries of 10,800 workers employed by Ganduji. And Hajj, the Nigerian pilgrims are lamenting tents, shortage, and poor feeding. Tinubu would have lost if Buhari removed fuel subsidy. Garu Bashiru is the one speaking here. We are seeing so many sides to this story They're beginning to come out um, one after the other. Quickly, before we go to um, uh, Peter, that's with us here in the studio, let's take a look at what we have on the front page of Business Day. It's all economic matters. What is the big story here? Business has grown as checkpoints, illegal tolls on roads inflate costs. That's another angle to this particular tightening of the seat belts by Nigerians. Poor subsidy removal interventions can worsen inflation. Exports are the ones that are speaking here. How weaker Naira could affect multinationals' finance impute costs. You can take a look at that and more on the front page of uh, Business Day. Okay, I think we just have to go to Peter this time around. I mean, there's so many stories that we can find right here on the front pages of our national dailies, really. But, I mean, one story that really is recounted in many of the pages um, is very much tied to the fuel subsidy removal and how Nigerians are groaning, especially the Muslim faithful who actually should have gotten the necessary ingredients that they need and livestock for, you know, <laughs> for the festivities are now saying, okay, now this is getting too much. And so many other issues tied around this issue of fuel subsidy removal. Is this intervention coming at a wrong time? Thank you, Mercy. Before I delve into that question, um, let me passionately appeal to the media. I mean, media practitioners, and I am one, that um, we need to inform the public as, you know, we have our duty as it's enshrined in the Constitution, the 1999 as amended. You know, you recall that about two weeks ago, when the president sacked the EFCC chairman, some newspapers, you know, picked it up that um, 
Muhammad Omar somebody else's was going to replace Bauer. And that never happened. It was Chakol who replaced Bauer as acting EFCC chairman. So it then means that the public is being misinformed, mm. and that's dangerous. I'm bringing this up because I have seen several other stories mm. that are coming up which are not also true. You recall also that it was said that the president has signed an increment for, you know, the president, the vice, the Senate yes. president, and what have you, to the tune of about a 114 or 115 percent increment. And uh, I think the following day, the, the President's Special Advisor on Communication, Mr. Dele Alake, came up to say that is not true because the President has not signed it. Uh, you know, back in those days when I was in the newsroom, my mentor, Mr. Femi Kusa, would tell us that if you are in doubt, you should leave it out. Don't misinform the public. We can't sit here and be analyzing falsehood. We can't sit here and be analyzing lies. We need to get our facts right. That is on the part of the media. Mm. Now, I wish to also appeal to government because it's a two-way thing. You see, most of the newspapers carried that misinformation because they went to the website of EFCC and discovered that the director of operation, who the president said they should hand over to, was uh, uh, Mohammed Umar that was on their website. Unfortunately, Mohammed Umar was the director of operations during Magu's tenure. Mm -hmm. And so it then means that they failed to change this information on their website. That is wrong. You see, we can't continue to run the country the way we are doing it. The people need to be informed adequately about what is going on around them. And so I would like to appeal to government that they need to do more in terms of information. You have to gather information. You have to disseminate information. But it has to be the truth and nothing but the truth. So to this extent, I, I believe that there is a lot to be done. Now you move to the salary break and the uh, prices of mm. things going up and it's so unfortunate. The fact that uh, there's a price increment, pump price increment is not even the issue at hand now. In every Senate climbs, when festivity is coming up, prices of goods and services comes down. That is not the case in Nigeria. In Nigeria, when you have perhaps uh, festivities like this coming up, that is when people want to cash out. They want to increase the prices of goods and services. This is not supposed to be. Patriotism is not just for the leaders alone. It should also be for we, the followers. Where is that patriotism? When the vegetable that you are supposed to sell at 200 naira, and now you're taking advantage of the fact that festival is coming, 
and then you are increasing it just for your own pocket. So this is not in any way tied. I to don't. If you subsidy removal, it's not transport fare. Before the be, remember before the fuel subsidy removal, what do we always have? In times of when Christmas, Easter, you know, all these kind of festival periods is coming, you have people increasing the prices of goods and services. So they should not, you know, in any way tie it to the fuel subsidy removal. Of course, the fuel subsidy removal is also, you know, making Nigerians uncomfortable at this point in time. But that is not the major reason. The reason is that we've always been taking advan undue advantage of fellow countrymen and women. Mm. And that's why we need to go back to the drawing board. Because when you go to London, when you go to America, France, Germany, and all these advanced countries, if festival is coming up, you find shops bringing down the prices of their it's goods. Yes. Well. Why is Nigeria's case different? In fact, um, Mr. Fowio, as we were speaking about this, I just saw in the papers that the discos are beginning to say Nigerians breeze up. I think um, we're just waiting for NEC to give us the go-ahead to increase our electricity. And target. that's another, you see, again, it, because we need to be careful. I read from somewhere else that said, no, they are not increasing uh, electric uh, tariff. And uh, discos are saying they want to increase the electric uh, tariff. Mm. You know, we can't continue to misinform the public this way. The government needs to do more. Information is key. When the people are not well informed, they start behaving anyhow. Crisis begin to set in. But when they are informed, and in any event, why does DISCO wants to increase their tariff, you may ask? Because the last time I checked, in my own community, it's over four weeks that we've not been having electricity. No so are we paying more for darkness? Hmm. That's a good question. Yes. Because I can't understand where this tariff is coming from. We buy our own poles, we buy cables, we repair transformers. In some instances, we even buy transformers. So why are you increasing the tariff? Of what essence is that to Nigerians? Well, we're going to need some accountability from the discos and all the parties exactly. that are involved in this They should come because... out and tell us why is it now that they are going to increase electric, uh, electricity tariff. Mm. Why? Why do we all, always, they will tell us, keep on suffering, just endure your <laughs> time your of... Belt. Yes, <laughs> it's coming. When is that time going to come? Is it when we are in the grave That's it. that we will now enjoy... Mm. Why can't government cut down their, their expenses? I mean, there are a lot of wastages in governance. And then you're asking the masses to endure for how long? Oh, these, are, these are serious questions that need answers. Mr. Fawoyo, please stay with us. It's time we open our phone lines. They have been displayed at the bottom of your screen. We have our first caller for the day. Thank you so much for joining us. All the way from Emo State. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Yes, um, Chief Fanyi Thomas Olumba, calling from Olugede Gumin already. Yes, uh, Muslim festival grown at subsidy removal, which is family budget. I want to tell you that it's not only the best Muslim festival that's growing. We are like united, jointly growing in this, judging by the doctrine of utility. Because utilitarianism is a moral philosophy. Defining the rightness of an action in terms of its contribution to general good which considers the ultimate good to be the greatest happiness for the greatest number. Who then is happy? 
whether Christian, Muslim, if I watch it as, or I'm sure if you watch it as, we are all in it together, groaning. But maybe you, maybe, you, you know, with the pose addressed by you on spiritual exercises, that got billions of naira taken from public coffers to sponsor pilgrims to Jerusalem and Mecca, sponsored by government. How does such spiritual exercise a pilgrimage or had concerned government? If spirituality no longer a personal thing, you sponsor Christians and Muslims to Israel and Mecca. What about the Israel worshippers? What about the Arusha of Christian worshippers? I am asking, what about those ideas who belong to Jewish and Hindu denominations? I see the involvement of government, both at federal and state levels, as under 25, through with public funds, as I found. And in all this, you ask again, how does it reflect on our attitude? How does it reflect on good governance? How does it reflect on the economy of the nation? How the present day young woman, you ask, you just go to Potter this morning. Thank you so much, Chibifanyi, for your contribution. Yes, we have Mazi Okora for calling from Abia State. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, my sister Mercy. Good morning, my brother. Mazi Okora for is my name from Arup, United good States. Good morning, Mazi. Every day we are talking about sources, but let's look at about the release that from Jump that said 452,453 UTM candidates fighting for admission space for only medicine, mm -hmm. only medicine, but available space for the 78,578 available. Now, you ask yourself, in a country like ours, we are talking about subsidy, subsidy, nobody is talking about the educational sector. If we just call it 500,000, fighting for a pay for 80,000, what is happening? Does it mean we don't have the facilities? That is why you say, I don't blame Nigeria, who are Japan going to Europe? Now, what is happening in Nigeria now? Now, we have the facilities, we have the, the buildings, we have the structure, we have the but government to inject into our ed the industry education is the problem. I've been saying it and nobody cares to so listen. 75% of courses in Nigeria universities are not accredited. Now, don't go to that medicine, only for medicine, just qualify for this. Now, look at other science oriented courses. There are many students fighting for it, enough, but the facilities are not there. We close our eyes and nose and we don't know what's happening. We're that. When you see people going outside like that, people will continue complaining. Thank now look you. at the electricity that's supposed to be available. Now they're telling us that electricity that... that let, let me tell you, Nigeria, one unit, they are talking about this unit, they are talking about the 1,000. 1,000, when they visit, it's around 7 to 8 units only. But President, they are buying 13 units for 1,000 naira. How many minutes or how many days will this stay? And we are not talking... Now look at the state governor. What Thank is you. The man came and introduced a system. The palliative. He gave the people that fertilizer. Instead of them paying thirty thousand, that they should buy fertilizer for only nineteen thousand. Is it not palliative? Is it not something for them? I think it's a Now what happened to other states? Other state governors and the House of Assembly are fighting. Thank you, fantastic contribution there. Thank you. Still from Abia State, we have Uche. Good morning, Uche. Good morning, Uche from Asia. Good morning. Good morning, my, my brother. You are getting you know different from ours. Four weeks in your community without the system. Ours is two years plus, and we have somebody wanting to be a senior president, representing us without talking about the issue of life. Two years plus, I have not had the man say anything on the floor of the National Assembly. I have more than 100 people working for me. I'm on this air. Imagine somebody being on this air. Imagine what, whether the person will be making gains. Mr. President, the past president has told us that, that the primary purpose of government is to win elections, not for good governance and security of the people. That is why he has said what he has said. It's a pity the way they are running this country. And some people are having hope that the country will move forward. The way we are running Nigeria, Nigeria is not going to work until we change the system. Let them do the needful. The needful is true federalism, so that every state will work for their, you know, for their own uh, 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 income. Mm. Going to Abuja is the problem of this country. That is why politics is the main business of Nigeria. Thank you. God bless Jay. you.
Thank you so much, Uchi, for your contribution. Let's speak with Garba. Garba, good morning. Calling us from Benue State. Good morning. Good morning. I'm asking you guys in the studio that what change from now is almost when the president made that statement. Tell me what change in our economy. That the inflation, there is nothing change. All this thing is just gra gra gra. I'm telling you, it's a honeymoon. Let me be honest with you. It's just yesterday the speaker of National Assembly appointed everyone to start something aid. They don't want to come to government if they are sincere. There is no honesty and sincerity in rural of subsidy. If the masses are that will suffer it, and I'm telling Nigeria, mark my word, nothing will change. I challenge the president to travel to France. Are they not subsidizing energy there? If you go back to the United States of America, are they not subsidizing energy there? Tell me, are they not subsidizing energy there? Let me only to ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Garba. Thank you so much for your contribution. Ada calls us from Plateau. Good morning, Ada. Hello, good morning. If Ada will not call you from just Plateau State. Good morning. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to talk about this uh, electricity increase, 40% electricity increase. I don't know if it's unfortunate that this is coming very close to the 12 subsidy remover, which is yet to be cushioned by MV. As if, as if it is not even enough, there's increase on VAT now on diesel, which has further increased that. So what is happening now is that it will affect the goods and services, and it's it threatening the manufacturers. So it will, everything will be passed on to the market um, that we are already in for very, a country where we have over uh, 130 million people living in multi-dimensional poverty. Then the, if the business climate is hard, it will definitely lead to loss of jobs. The government will be digging a new hole to fill an old one. So I, I, I feel the federal government should look at this thing again and give it a human fix. Then when it comes to the forcing of the, uh, the, the minority leadership, the opposition party should not allow that to happen. Because if that happens, we're going to have uh, another, uh, I mean, a uh, uh, rubber stamp uh, national assembly. All the same, let's not do about Nigeria or Nigeria. Thank you so much, Ada, for your contribution as always. Still from Plateau, we have Angela. Good morning, Angela. Hello, Mercy Frank. Good morning. Good morning, Angela. Good morning. Yes. The Frank one we're talking here this morning, most of the people that go to the Holy Land this time around, when you, when you check and see their governor's girlfriends, minister's girlfriends, commissioner's girlfriends, They'll go and go and repeat when they feel, when they feel their channel, that's all. And most of these governors that you're seeing, they are all family people that go for this picnic. So what they are telling us in Nigeria, they use a word that no pay, no gain. They are just punishing Nigeria. Nobody is doing anything. I want to tell Nigerians, come out and do what is good for you. And know how to farm and do things for your family. You go to the farm, help me that, pushing you. Let's hope the president will help us do it. I know he will help us. May God help us in this country. Oh, Angela, thank you so much for your contribution. Um, we believe that's the, that's, that's the end of it for you. Thank you so much for that one minute well spent. The calls will definitely keep coming in, but we have to put a pause on it and get your comment on, you know, your reaction to um, any of the issues that you think should be of importance that any of our callers have mentioned. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that uh, one of the callers said uh, for more than two yes. years that they've not had electricity. And this is the disco that wants to increase uh, electricity tariff. I think that should be put on hold because until you get it right, you can't continue to, you know, make your people suffer because you want to generate revenue. Mm. What are they paying for? Darkness? Two years? That's shameful. I think that the government needs to, you know, study since it's a new government that is just coming mm -hmm. in, they need to study all these things before they keep heaping, you know, all sorts of increments on Nigerians to pay. It's not right. 
Indeed it isn't. Indeed it isn't. But let's take a look at the rest of the papers that we have and come back to you, Pete, uh, Mr. Foyo, for your uh, contribution. Okay, so what we have right here is the Nigerian News Direct. That is uh, the paper that we are taking a look at now. So what do we have on the front page of Nigeria News Direct? The big story says, my administration delayed petrol subsidy removal to allow to number win election. We've seen that in other papers. So let's see what else we've got that is new. Okay, quickly. Um, review salaries of workers to curb corruption. Ah, the speaker, Abbas, is the one that's speaking here. NDLEA arrests 315 suspects, seizes 4,776 kilogram of illicit drugs coming on the heels of the World Drug Abuse Day. I think uh, this is something that needs to be taken care of in Nigeria, this drug abuse. EFCC, that's above the masthead, EFCC arrest fake senator for alleged 5.7 million euro internet fraud. Mm. Ogun APC fault Binga Daniel on support for Tinumbu, Dapo, Abiodun. And Rotimi Makinde uh, decries the decided appointment in NNTC. Others, here we go again. Let's move on from the Nigerian News Direct and see what we have on the front page of this Nigeria. The big story comes from the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, and they said 40% electricity tariff hike will force manufacturers to close shop. That is what we have on the front page of Nigeria, uh, this Nigeria, and it's a pretty catchy one. Hmm. And here is something that's very interesting. As Nestle Nigeria replaces cornstarch with cassava due to rising import costs. Hmm. Let's move on from that and see what we have beside the masthead. Nigerian banks, what we are taking is the front page of this Nigeria. That's what we're taking a look at. Um, beside the masthead, Nigerian banks generated 96.5 billion naira from e-business in the first quarter of 2023. We also have other... Um, issues that we can find there on the front page of this Nigeria. Let's move from this Nigeria and see what we have on the front page of Punch. A pretty interesting story we haven't seen in other ones. Senate Minority Leader PDP Atiku set to clash with G5 uh, over Tambowal. Comes with interesting writers which you can take a very good look at uh, when you pick a copy. Of course you can see the big picture of the day shows um, um, uh, the new customs controller general, um, you know, being decorated and of course it's promising technology driven operations. Well, we look forward to seeing that happen. We look forward to seeing that happen. What else do we have? Uh, let us see. Above the masthead, Buhari hands over 700. I take that again, I beg your pardon. Buhari hands over 974 billion Naira uncompleted road projects. You want to find out where that statistics is coming from, you can find it inside the paper, page 9. And of course, World Bank OK's fresh $500 million loan for the federal government. Is it time for us to take a loan? Even as, um, uh, as um, uh, the body that is very much related with um, um, debt in Nigeria, I did say we've, we've almost reached the threshold of, you know, our debt collection in Nigeria and we should be very careful. Is this a good time? Uh, that's a question that uh, you would have to answer. Leadership newspaper, let's see. Tinubu headhunt global experts for cabinet uh, slots. And, uh, of course, what do we have? Um, um, the Nigerian Air Force uh, redeploys 52 AVMs, 46 CMDRs in major shakeup. That and other stories you can find on the front page of the leadership, which is going to be the last paper in no particular order. Mr. Fawoyo, I mean, it's been interesting ones that we've seen right here on the front pages of our national dailies. And uh, it is very interesting that we should go for politics. Of course, the G5 governors clashing with them. But first of all, let's see what the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria said about the electricity tariff and how it will force many manufacturers to close shop. Many of them are closing shops already. I mean, I have a sister who told me over the weekend that uh, they are not working until probably September. Wow. So that means that she's going to stay at home with her other colleagues 
for more than, this is June, July, August, September. That's three months. And who knows when they will be recalled back to work. So these are the challenges. And uh, honestly speaking, we can't blame this present administration for all this crisis because they were down before they came in. The former president needs to explain to Nigeria what did he do with all the borrows, the money he borrowed, you know, borrowed from uh, uh, the international community. You have projects uncompleted, you have this not done, and you're there telling Nigerians that uh, you deliberately <laughs> did not increase uh, fuel pump because you wanted your candidate to win. That's bullshit. You've got to explain Bref better bre off breakfast language but... than this. Because, I mean, you can't stay there and be telling us that you deliberately did all this. For us to suffer, you were, the, you were, you were, you were not just a president, but you were also the minister, minister for petroleum. petroleum. And NNPC is being indicted. Are you saying that you are not going to be indicted too? These are questions that you need to come and answer. Even as ex-president of the country, you've not done well. And the result we are seeing. So for me, I believe that uh, the president, the former president, needs to be recalled because he said that nobody should disturb him. <laughs> Obviously, he knew that he had done bad things before leaving office. And that's why we are, we are where we are today. Mm. Crying, fuel subsidy gone. Uh, you are telling us uh, the electricity tariff you are going to increase. Now, who knows what is going to be the next, next thing. So, I think that the former president needs to be recalled to come and answer for all these indictments. Wow, I wish we had more time to continue. Probably we'll just um, squeeze in one more issue uh, that uh, we uh, that really is in the mind of everything, which is security. Yeah. And of course, the appoint, appointment of um, 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 ex um, EFCC boss Nuhu Ribadu. Yes. Um, let, let's get your thoughts on that. Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I've always said this that I don't care where that person is coming from. I don't care if he's a Muslim, a Christian, a Buddhist, or an atheist, or whatever. What I want is, is he competent enough to handle that position? Mm. And from all indications, it seems that the man is not competent enough. Although mm -hmm. it is too early for us to mm -hmm. assess him, but just take a look at the number of people that have died since this administration came into power. There are more than 400 that we can count. What about those ones that we can't count? Are we going to continue this way as a country? I think it is high time we take the issue of security more seriously. The president has gone outside the country, perhaps to woe investors to come back home, to come and invest in Nigeria. No investor will invest his money where there is no security. Of course, I've always said this. Government has no business in providing jobs for people. Mm. You call investors in, but before then, you make your home in order. You have security, you have judicial system that is working, and you don't, you know, ask people to pay tax, taxes unnecessarily. So if all these things are not put in place, if you like, you go, you go and sleep outside the country looking for investors. Nobody will bring his money down to Nigeria. Mm. So to this extent, I think what the government needs to do more is to ensure that there is security. And the government said that they are trying, I mean, he, he said in his inauguration speech that he is going to adhere to the rule of law. We are still waiting for him to do that. Rule of law is not going to be by words of mouth, but by action. The Supreme Court has said that Kanu, I mean, Kanu, uh, what's his name, the IPOB man, should be released. You release him if you know that you want to follow due process and the rule of law. 
But if you are not going to release him, it's so unfortunate. Mm. Thank you so much um, for your contribution, Mr. Peter Fowell, a public analyst. You gave us your perspective on some of the issues that are really bothering Nigeria, so what we can find on the front pages of our national digits. Thank you for joining us on News Hub. Thank you, Mercy. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for you know, being a part of the conversation. But we continue after this break with the news updates on the top of the hour. Stay with us.